Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue. Okay, today, finally, we're gonna do a video. We're gonna see how to set up our turntable. That is something I've been wanting to do for many months. There are a lot of videos out there on YouTube. And um, in the end, I just decided to postpone every time. But finally, I think it's the moment we must deliver this kind of video. Um, I know a lot of you already know all this stuff. Although I think it's fun to watch and I also give a little more insight, I think, than other videos. You'll tell me if I'm, if I'm right or, or wrong. Okay, so 10 main passages to set up perfectly your turntable. Let's take a look. Okay, before starting, um, I did a video, here's a link, on uh, nine tips to choose your first turntable or any, in, any, in any way choose the correct turntable that have, must have certain parameters. Check that video, stop this one, check that one if you do not have your turntable, if you're deciding to buy one, etc. Okay? After that, you're ready to set it up now with this video. So, um, obviously first mount your turntable if there are parts that need to be um, assembled do that and then come back okay so first step the first step is to set your turntable on a stable platform i see a lot of videos of uh, also gurus hi-fi gurus or, or great passionists that just leave put their turntable on crummy little um uh, shelves or, or, or bad f wiggly furniture. Absolutely do not do that. Please, you need a flat and stable surface, surface. I also did a video on vibrations, which is strictly connected to that. Here's a link. Um, vibrations are fundamental. You really need co to control that, especially in a turntable. That is why it is important to have a, a table, a surface, that has some kind of damping if you if you can if it's possible. Otherwise, look for a platform to dampen the uh, resonance, the vibrations of your turntable. In any case, check that video. You'll you'll find some insight for that. Um, obviously, we're gonna need to set our turntable perfectly leveled. That's fundamental. I mean, the turntable has to be exactly level. It cannot be a little bit um, uh, let's say. Uh, pending towards a, a, a direction. It has to be perfectly centered on the platform and perfectly leveled. Very important. Step number two, connect the turntable to the preamplifier. Um, a lot of turntables already have their preamp inside uh, built in, so you don't have to do that. As I suggested in another video, here's a link. I, uh, I think the, be the best option is to connect the turntable to an external preamp of high quality preamp. That's the best solution. I'm not gonna tell you why, check that video. At that point, step number three, you have to connect the um, turntable obviously to the electric current for the rotations for the motor. But apart from that, you have to also connect um, the preamp or if you have it built in, the RCA um, outputs directly to your receiver. At that point, you're set. It's very easy. It's not that complicated. Now comes the fun. Okay, um, step number four. We're gonna see an in-depth video and I will comment that there. Let's take a look. Okay, so as you can see here, we have our head shell with its four golden pins. If you have your tone arm, it's the exact same thing. Don't worry, you just need to connect the uh, cartridge to it. Here's my cartridge. Please remember always to keep on the protection. Otherwise, you might destroy your stylus. This is very important. Keep it on at all times. Use some tape if you want to keep it in position. So we're not going to connect our um, cartridge, this Dina vector, to the head shell. In order to do this, we need some leads, which will connect the both part, both parts of the with the pins. Um, the leads are must put in must be inserted with a specific color so you can find that scheme together with your cartridge and as you can see it's a very tricky um, passage here you have to insert each pin very carefully 
each lead in each pin. Um, as you can see, it's very large. This is going to happen very often. So we need to squeeze a little bit to crimp these pins in order to have a um, very tight fit. See, put your finger between the plowers in order to exercise not uh, uh, less pressure. Otherwise, you might completely crush the pin. This is very delicate. See, I'm very slowly, delicately um, uh, crushing the pin. And now I can, uh, I've done this all, obviously for all four of them, and now I can insert it. And by inserting it now, I see there is a little resistance, which is perfect and will uh, allow to the, the leads to stay in position. This is fundamental. So we have to repeat this for all four pins. See how they slide not too easily. And that will be uh, allow, uh, allow the, uh, the leads to be fastened. So once we have done this for all four pins, we also have to do it, obviously, for the, uh, the cartridge. Always remember to the protection. And take your time to do these passages. I mean, it's, it's, they're very tiny, they're very small, and you have to be nice and calm. It has to be a nice day and don't worry about anything. One at a time, you connect them all. As I said before, you will find the scheme of the colors along with your cartridge or with the turntable. There is a predefined scheme, which is usually red, white, blue, and green. Okay, now it's time to fasten our um, cartridge to the head shell on the upper part. We're gonna insert these um, uh, hexagon key um, screws we were gonna fasten them not too tight because we need to move now the cartridge in our second uh, passage so now th there we have just our cartridge simply fastened and we can install our head shell directly into the arm of the Technics in our case and we're ready to go okay step number five Balance our counterweight of our turntable in order to have an equilibrium between the part with the cartridge and the, the part with the weight. Let's take a look. Okay, I have already set it everything. I just put a little bit of balance. It doesn't matter to be perfect equilibrium. There's no need. Step number six. Um, this is fundamental. We're gonna use an alignment protractor. You, you gotta need that. You gotta find one of these. I'll show you. Here we have a few types I have. You'll see them also in the video in a few seconds. Um, you can download them online and print them with your printer at home. It's very easy. You have to find the correct one because there probably is a precise one for your model. If not, even a general one like these are good. Don't worry. The, the ones designed for your turntable are always going to be better. Let's take a look how to use it. Okay, uh, this is a very simple alignment protractor of TNT Audio. As you can see, there are two points where the uh, cartridge has to align the stylus also. And actually the cantilever, not the stylus, the cantilever has to be perfectly aligned with their center line. You have that option with two positions or this other option of clear audio where you have just one single position. For the Technics model, instead, we have a dedicated one. Here you can see the anti-skating is still on. That is why it's pulling the arm on the other side. So as I was saying, for the Technics, we have a specific one, the bare-walled arc protractor. This is, this is one of the best for the 12,000, 1200 series of Technics. And you have four specific places that the, um, um, the, the, the uh, torn arm has to be aligned. The, the, the first and the last one are just um, checkpoints, while the two detailed ones, instead, we, st we really have to have the um, cantilever perfectly aligned, which is difficult. As you can see, it, the, the arm has to do an arch in order to touch all four points, which is very difficult. And that's why we need to uh, let the cartridge slide and twist a little bit. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to touch all, all four points. So we're going to unscrew and you have to do this several times until you find the correct inclination and the correct um, amount of cartridge that has to 
go ahead. As you can see, there's this tool that Technix gives you, gives us, which is very useful because it already tells you more or less where the uh, the stylus needs to be, which is at the end of the white tip. So uh, starting from this, at least for the Technix, it's much more easier. At that point, we can regulate how much the cart the um, cartridge must be uh, aligned to the the grid you see on the paper and at the same time how much it has to come out the head must pop out let's say from the the head shell as you can see i touched the first point and now i'm aligning it the stylus hat uh, the cart the cantilever which holds the stylus must be perfectly aligned first i do the, the the bottom one and the top one and then afterwards i go to the uh, the, the precision ones Again, I have to adjust because this is a very delicate. I left all these passages in order you, you understand how hard it is. In other videos, this does not come out. So as you can see, finally, I'm trying to align correctly the cantilever because it's the cantilever that needs to be aligned. Here's a photograph. The cantilever needs to be perfectly aligned with the, um, as you can see, the line, not the body of the cartridge. This is important, guys. I have to do this with some light, I suggest you to use some light, otherwise you're not gonna be able to see if it's properly aligned. And you have to do it on the two positions. Here's the second position. Once you're done, that's it. Okay, step number seven, very easy. Uh, if your turntable has a VDA, uh, um, the tone arm vertical tracking angle, you have to regulate that in order to have a perfectly parallel a situation between your arm and the platter of your turntable. Let's take a look how to regulate it. Okay, here, very simply, the Technics does have VDA. It's very simple. You just unlock um, a little knob and you can regulate very easily the whole arm, which can go several millimeters up and several, several millimeters down. This is very uh, useful if you have different mats or uh, other other or other things on top okay step number eight um this is very important you're gonna need something like this it's important to have a little scale uh, a sensible one otherwise if you're just gonna use the counterweight on your turntable you're not gonna have great results and the because that's gonna determine in the tracking force always check the manufacturer of the cartridge of the suggested tracking force put the maximum don't worry but do not go over the maximum suggested, and, and um, in that way you'll get the most out of your uh, out of your grooves without deteriorating the record. Let's take a look. Okay, so now we're gonna use this little scale I got. Um, this is pretty expensive. You can find it on Amazon. I'll put the link uh, below in the video description. And the goal for um, my Dina Vector is 2.2 grams, as indicated by the house. Um, so you, after uh, I've regulated the counterweight several times, I'm finally reaching uh, the 2.2 grams. I'm lowering the, the tone arm, which slowly goes down and applicates pressure on the pad of the, um, of the scale. And finally, we reach around 2.2. So now I have to slightly modify the weight and try again. And you have to do that over and over until you get the desired weight tracking force see you have to keep on redoing it keep on redoing it until you get the correct um, uh, pressure unfortunately if you use only your counterweight that's not going to be uh, detailed enough and there we go okay step number nine anti-skating Let's take a look how to regulate it. That will counterbalance the tendency of the arm to go inside towards the inner part of your of the of the record. Obviously, because the grooves are also bringing the a tone arm towards the center. Anti skating counterbalance that, bringing the cartridge uh, perfectly vertical to the uh, turntable to the record. Let's take a look. Very easily, since we have 2.2 grams of tracking force, we're going to put 2.2 anti-skating uh, regulation that's it very simple okay step number 10 if you want you can buy something like this i think it's 
rather helpful a LP test this is one of the best but there are also other ones and it's it's with this you're gonna be certain that certain and, and different parameters that do make a change in the music reproduction are perfectly um, set it let's take a look to a few examples okay now we're gonna try this and see a little bit very quickly the main steps of this Okay, so the first track is just going to identify the left and right channel. It's here. Channel orientation. My voice is recorded on the left-hand channel only and should appear to come from the left-hand speaker. My voice is recorded on the right-hand channel only and should appear to come from the right-hand speaker. Okay, now we're going to test the phase, although from the video camera it's not going to be perfectly balanced, but you'll have an idea. Phasing test. If your system phasing is correct, my voice should appear to come from the space between the speakers. My voice has now been recorded out of phase, and it should be impossible to tell from which direction it now emanates. We're going to take a look at um, test number six, where a 300 hertz tone is going to be generated on the left and right speaker, uh, plus 12 dB, and see if the anti-skating is set properly. Try this at a higher amplitude. Perfect. You should hear a buzz if something is wrong from one of the two channels. Let's try the, tra the tracking capability. Let's go on the other side. Low frequency resonance test. Lateral. 25 hertz. 23 hertz. 21 hertz. Now it's going to go lower and lower, all the way to low frequencies. At that point, it's going to be a resonance in the arm and see if we got the right compliance and tone arm matching with the cartridge. So that's okay. That's just That was just a few of the capabilities of this test disc. Well, okay guys, now your turntable is set. Finally, let's start playing that music. If you have more suggestions or other tools or gizmos that can help us in um, getting a better setup of our turntable, please post your comments here below. I'm very interested in this and thank you again for watching. Bye guys.